Good day. I want to talk with you about uh, the Florida Evidence Code and look at some specific aspects of the Florida Evidence Code that will be helpful to you as you begin to try cases or to practice law in the state of Florida. And the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to look at the federal rules of evidence and I'm going to compare, the floor, compare and contrast the Florida Evidence Code to the Federal Evidence Code. The goal is to learn by identifying the differences. I'll point out to you in the materials that I provide, we'll have all of the substantive differences for you, but I'm going to focus on those differences uh, looking at the slides that we provide today. Now the first rule that I want to talk, start with is Rule 104. And you should remember from law school or from your practice in federal court that Rule 104 deals with the ability of the judge to rule on the admissibility of evidence. And you should think about it from this standpoint, from a federal perspective. The, the judge in a federal courthouse has phenomenal cosmic power within that courthouse. He or she can consider any piece of evidence that is brought before them when determining admissibility. And they really don't need to be concerned with whether or not the evidence that they're using to determine admissibility is in itself admissible. Now they are sort of limited by the rules of privilege in that regard, but otherwise they can consider inadmissible evidence when determining admissibility of other evidence. This particularly comes into play when you have a hearsay statement for which you don't have a, an, an acknowledged exception or exclusion that would normally let it be used. The Florida Evidentiary Code, on the other hand, the Florida Rule 90.104 is different in that the Florida Rule only allows the Florida State Judge to consider otherwise admissible evidence when determining the admissibility of a piece of evidence. Now this is a limitation that exists in the state of Florida that doesn't exist uh, at the federal level. And it has to do with the way Florida perceives the rights, the role, and the function of the judge as opposed to a federal courthouse. And it's worth, uh, it's worth remembering. Now just like in the federal courthouse, uh, any objection has to be timely, uh, there needs to be a motion to strike, and there's got to be the specific grounds for the reason of the objection, or the specific grounds need to be uh, readily ascertainable from the context of the objection. The best practice to take in that regard is to ensure that I actually use an appropriate grounds when I make my objection. I don't want the, the trial court or the appellate court to be relying upon the context. I want to state that context clearly and specifically so there's no issue on appeal. Now, in the federal rules, um, we look for the substantial right of the party that's going to be affected. Um, the same standard is applied from a Florida perspective, and you can see that on the slide over here. Uh, they play out pretty much the same way, so we're not too concerned with the differences from the standpoint of the substantial right involved, but if I go on, and I look at uh, the differences of error when there's a mistake on an evidentiary ruling. You, you can see uh, from the slide that, uh, in fact, the federal courts divide things into constitutional and non-constitutional error. Uh, and then they look at the verdict and they say, well, can I say that to a beyond a reasonable doubt standard, the mistake, the error, did not influence the verdict? Florida, on the other hand, um, we don't differentiate between constitutional and non-constitutional evidentiary mistakes on appeal. Instead, we look at the issue. And once the issue of the error exists, at the appellate level, the burden is going to be on the state of Florida to show to a beyond a reasonable doubt standard uh, that the error complained of did not contribute to the verdict or that there is no reasonable possibility that the error contributed to the conviction itself. And in Florida, if you can't say that this beyond a reasonable doubt standard has been met, then the error is deemed harmful, regardless of whether it is a constitutional or a non-constitutional error. Uh, that's an interesting uh, differentiation uh, from the federal court, and we do it primarily to ensure that the defendant or the accused in a criminal case gets the right level of support and protection at the appellate level when there is an evidentiary mistake on the part of a Florida judge. Now, looking at the slide here, you can see how in the federal rules of evidence, 104 is bound by privilege. And what do I mean by that? I mean that a judge cannot pierce privilege, uh, whether it's attorney-client, priest-penitent, or the like, 
to make a determination of the admissibility of other evidence. Florida, on the other hand, has some specific cases that uh, limit the trial court's jurisdiction in that regard. And I've thrown them up here on the slide for you just to, just to read them off. Bowers v. State and Johnson v. State. Both of these are good cases for you to take a look at to make certain that you've properly got a sense of how far the power of the trial judge goes when they're determining the admissibility of evidence under a 104 standard. Let's move on now uh, to Federal Rule of Evidence 106 and the corresponding Florida Rule of Completeness.